Welcome everyone to What Ranks in Google SGE. My name is George Wynn. I am the Director of SEO Editorial here at Wix, uh, which means I edit the articles that you see on the SEO Learning Hub where you probably registered for this uh, webinar. I'm going to talk to you, uh, I'm going to be running the Q&A and just helping smooth things along, but our experts here are who I want to spotlight first and foremost, actually not foremost, right? Because we're all equal here. So I'm going to scratch that and strike that one. First and equally, Anne Smarty. Uh, she's an SEO analyst, founder of Viral Content B. I remember meeting her initially and one of the biggest lines that jumped out um, was she was former editor-in-chief of Search Engine Journal. So she's going to be lending us her expertise. Say hello, Anne. Hi there, thank you for having me. And um, after Ann speaks, we're gonna hear from Eli Schwartz. He is a hub author as well as Ann actually. He wrote um, product-led SEO, the why behind building your organic growth strategy at the time when that was released had to have been one of the biggest uh, SEO book releases I remember, Eli. Um, Eli, say hello. Thanks for having me and thanks for making me equal to Ann. <laughs> I, I think and equal to equal to Anne is <laughs> Crystal Carter, head of SEO communications here at Wix. She does everything under the sun, um, but she is always on these webinars. So if you've been here before, I'm sure you've already, you're familiar with her. Um, Crystal, you're going to be smoothing us along with the housekeeping, right? Yes, yes. So um, uh, hello to the webinar fam. Um, and I'm I'm really just here to fangirl at um, some of my favorite SEOs, uh, particularly who've been talking about this topic a lot. So you're really in for a treat. I'm so grateful to have them here. Um, so we are going to be, in terms of housekeeping, we're going to do a little FAQ. First of all, yes, this webinar is being recorded. If somebody joins later, just tell them, yes, it's being recorded. People always ask, and it's good that people are engaged. Um, the, the webinar will be posted on YouTube. You can also watch our old webinars on YouTube, and we'll send you the link in an email after, after it's posted. And you can also ask questions in the Q&A panel, um, which is in the, in the same sort of area where you saw the chat. And um, we will be curating those as we go along as, as best we can. And we will also be sort of taking a sort of taking a, sort of the themes and trying to ask and make sure that we can address those in our Q&A section as well. Um, and also make sure that you check out future webinars at the Wix SEO Learning Hub. We've got another one coming up next month talking about GA4 and um, lots of things there. In terms of agendas, we've just done the introductions and the way we're gonna go through this is first we're gonna hear from Anne Smarty. She's gonna talk to us about um, AI overviews, SGE, that whole thing um, with regards to brand. And then we're gonna hear from um, Eli Schwartz, who's gonna to talk to us about um, some, some more sort of tactical things around sort of general general approach to, to SGE AI overviews. Um, and again, as I said, both of them have been in this space for a while. So they, we're gonna get some great insights from both. Um, I'm gonna share a couple of resources um, that we have available on the Wix SEO Learning Hub. And then we're also going to get into our Q and A. And with that, um, I think we can hand off to Anne. You're ready to share your screen, Anne? I hope I can manage this. It says I cannot manage while you are, I cannot share while oh. you are sharing. So you have to stop that. Let me see that I share the right screen. Uh, no. Let me try again. Okay. As a reminder to everyone, um, we already have some questions for the Q&A later, but you also have the ability to put in uh, your questions as they kind of come along here. I see our, some people are putting in general questions. Um, you have the best possible odds if your question is related to the topic SGE. Tell me what you are seeing on your screen right now. Is yeah, we've got, we've got your we've got your slides there. Good, because there, there are a lot of screens to choose from. So, uh, just a quick introduction. I'm um, I've been in this industry for about two decades. I've seen it all. Right now, I'm the founder, and this is my latest uh, adventure. I'm the founder of my own agency, Smarty Marketing, and. Um, so it's it's a new territory for me. So I'm much involved into what's going in SEO world, and it's going. Something is happening every week. Trust me. And uh, when I was first uh, planning to do this uh, presentation, it was still SGE, so generative experience. That was the part of private opt-in only uh, lab from Google where they would show show you summaries from search results that are generated by AI and 
they went public with it about a week ago. So it's still very fresh. Trust me, I had to really scramble for, for more up-to-date uh, screenshots of everything that I was talking about because it's it's very inconsistent. Sometimes they would show it, uh, screenshots. It's also uh, overview sometimes uh, with the incognito mode uh, in Chrome. It's a different story when you are logged in to uh, search to Google. It's a different uh, screenshot. So bear with me. I'm sure there will be a lot of things developing from here. There is a a lot of feedback being shared with Google on this on this newest feature. It's all over the news. So I'm sure Google will be working on this more and more. So we will have to meet again and talk about this as it is developing. But this is what we're seeing right now. And uh, my topic today is um, branded search. And uh, that's what we are starting with. What is branded search? It is any search query, anything that people search for, or in Google Bing or ChatGPT uh, that contains your brand name. So it, it's very important for every, any brand name to make sure that they know what people are, are researching about it and also trying to control those search results more. And this is one of the examples when the featured snippet is not uh, owned by the brand name, but it's answering the question obviously better than any page on that brand uh, site that it, um, so it is featured. So the result of this is this, you do not control the sentiment that much and you may lose those people who are searching for any query for any branded query because they find some other site. Maybe that could be a competitor. Maybe that could be anything else. Maybe that could be like this, uh, some information or article, but it's not, a, it's not the brand owned, so it could it could be a last click. So why it is important, I'm sure everyone knows people search for brand names in Google. If, whether it's navigational when they're trying just to get to the website, or maybe because they want they like to do their research before they deal with the brand, but people search, and this is old statistics. I'm sure it's it's a very it's a growing trend because more and more people know how to research brands online. And people, anytime I see a Facebook ad, for example, I never buy anything until I search for that brand name in Google. So and it's all over the place. So it's um it's very important to know what people are searching, what they not want to know about you so that you can answer those questions. Another thing to keep in mind that Google Chrome once was a new browser. Now it's a very dominant browser uh, online. Anytime you type anything in Google Chrome URL bar, it's automatically a search. So you, you, your users, whether it's on mobile device or desktop device, they may see suggestions when you, the people start uh, just typing your brand name, they may, they may see those autocomplete suggestions to try and research your brand before even going there. So it's not even when people want to do the research, it's sometimes when they just want to go to your website, they may be prompted to research your brand and so search for you. One other thing to keep in mind, any branded query is very high intent worry because people already know you, people already know your brand name. The last thing they want to know is the reassurance that you are trustworthy enough to deal with. So they search for you and whether they see that those reviews or any negativity there, or they may be reassured that you're a trusted brand, this, dis this determines whether there will be a sale or not. So this is a highly highly high intent search that you need to uh, keep in mind and dominate too. So what we need to know here is that brand new search is your biggest brand asset, but it's not easy to control because the algorithm decides what they want, what it wants to ranks. But the most important thing is that with Google AI overviews, there is even less control over what people can see when they're searching for your brand or they're asking questions about your brand because they are dynamic, they're personalized and they're AI driven. So no one really knows what AI uh, overviews are going to include when it comes to your branded search. Quick thing, uh, quick example from SGE experiment. I could not replicate it uh, now when it's public, but that was an interesting example of how uh, one of the branded search queries was summarized 
and it was right there. So um, for reviews, for reviews driven query, Google would say this is not a trustworthy brand right away on top of everything else, on top of search results, on top of organic search results. They would say this is not a brand to deal with. And again, I could not replicate it with the public uh, AI overviews. So it's a good sign that Google is moving forward more carefully with those. And they are trying to not to show that as much as they would show it with SGE experiment. But this may very well be the future when they are confident enough in their product to show it more and more for branded search queries. Um, this is the live example of uh, AI overviews as we see them now. For MailChimp reviews, Google would show all the negative and downsides uh, things about MailChimp that people, reviewers, were finding with the service. Again, not as drastic as with the previous example, but still something you want to keep in mind that sometimes Google or people would search for your brand name and because you have all that negative sentiment, very obvious in search results, you would see those AI overviews showing right in the face of uh, your potential clients, maybe even current clients, or maybe clients that are trying to switch from the competitor, uh, all the negative things that people are saying about your brand will be summarized on top of search results and be right there for them to change their opinion right away. Quick thing, uh, how do AI overviews work again? They started as SGE experiment um, that you could opt in for to test, to share feedback with Google. Uh, started about six months ago, maybe a little bit more. About at that time, Google also filed a patent that was about a generative summaries for search results. So we have a little bit of an idea of how that works. It does summarize search results. So uh, everything that is related to a search query is summarized on top of search results uh, with sometimes with references, sometimes with no references. But uh, I think that with AI reviews, the references are much more visible than they were with SGE experiment, which is a good thing. The tricky thing here is twofold. First of all, it's not top 10 results that they choose to summarize. They are very random. Whatever AI is choosing from uh, uh, Google indexed pages, so it could be number thirty, number fifty. I think the recent um, there there are initial studies. Again, there's too early to to tell how much, which search results Google would pick to summarize. But the initial um, studies were like eight percent of top 10 results appear in AI overviews. All the rest references are coming from further down the page. It could be number 20, number 30, number 50. We don't know yet how Google chooses uh, those such as those uh, references to summarize and highlight in the AI overviews. So it will time will we will see. I'm sure we'll figure it out. There will be a lot of studies, a lot of testing. So far, it's almost like for branded queries, the more you can control the sentiment of everything that talks about your client, of your site, of your brand, the better, because we never know which, uh, which of those uh, references will get into the AI overview and get summarized and get on top of Google for everyone searching for those to see. The other thing here is that uh, from that patent, it's also obvious that Google doesn't only look at the current query. It could personalize based on what people were searching before that. So within one session, it could also per, it could also get some answers from related queries very closely related. For example, if someone is searching for your brand and then immediately searching for your brand reviews, there is a big chance that Google would include answers that relate to that related query to the AI overview as well. Again, this is from patent. We never know how much uh, of that is getting into live results because it's just the theory and the, the how it could work, but not necessarily how it works. But this is uh, uh, one, one thing is for sure is that Google is summarizing ranking URLs, those that are indexed and those that are ranked. 
uh, this is this is the biggest thing here that we need to keep in mind. So the the more you you can provide Google with context about your brand, about what people are saying your brand, the better you can control those AI overviews that appear for your branded search. So how do we know what people are searching when it comes to your brand? Again, it depends on your brand, on, on the popularity of your the size of your brand. If you're a local business, uh, not necessarily people are going to search a lot about you. If it's a bigger brand, there will be a lot of search queries that include your brand name. The first thing to keep in mind is a Google order complete, Google suggest as we used to call it. This is uh, what shows up when you start searching for your brand name. And this is the most important thing because again, in Chrome, if you just start, if you want to go to your site, sometimes Google would suggest that right away. So you have, you have a, your clients or your customers have a very good chance to be willing to search for something, even if they were not going to do, to do that. So keep in mind on your branded autocomplete results so that you know what is the most commonly searched when it comes to your brand. We have at Internet Market Ninjas, we have a tool that pulls those uh, or auto suggest results. It's free and it uh, for every letter of alphabet so that for bigger brands, if people are searching more for you, this is a good tool to just ex export everything and look uh, what, what people are searching for when it comes to your brand name. Um, people also ask very good uh, source of information when it comes to branded search. If you search for your brand name, you will see those uh, branded autocomplete results. And um, you can tell what Google thinks is relevant uh, in terms of questions when it comes to your um, brand name, what is associated with your brand, what are some of the questions that people often have uh, when it comes to your brand name. So keep in mind of those. Don't forget that those are dynamic. Whichever uh, question you click, there will be more questions coming down uh, in the same box. So keep in mind, they are also very inconsistent, so they change. So it's a good idea to keep searching for your brand name and brand and branded queries on a regular basis and see how those are changing, what Google, what new questions are appearing there, um, and keep in, and create some type of context around those questions on your site as well. So when you know, uh, there are many ways to search for your branded uh, queries. And um, you could even, if it's a big name, you can use SEMrush, SEMrush or Ahrefs to just use it as a keyword and extend it using those keyword research tools. So there are a lot of ways. I only listed those that are most important because they are right there in search results and you, you need to know it, those at least. So when you know those search queries that include your brand name, what can you do to somehow try and influence AI overviews that are coming up for your name? First of all, reviews, and this is absolutely the most important asset for your brand name because most people would search for reviews for big brand for local brands for anyone uh, they are trying to deal with they will be searching for brand name for reviews uh, and your brand name to that the tricky thing with with reviews and i've been saying this for ages first of all uh, I don't know if you've heard or not, but Google documentation was leaked uh, the other day, and there are a lot of uh, things to learn from that. One of them is that they do pay attention to reviews. A lot of a lot of the algorithm is um, evaluating them and including them in the algorithm. So reviews are huge, and people are searching for them all uh, all the time as well. So the biggest, the nicest thing with reviews is that only unhappy customers are leaving reviews on third-party sites. And Google chooses to rank them on top of everything else because those are considered unbiased reviews, but naturally they are biased because no, ha no happy customer will go along, like it will, will search Google for some third-party review site and leave their happy review there. So in a very common uh, scenario with many clients that I have, people uh, all those third-party reviews will be two, three average review ratings. And uh, in many ways, 
Google would choose to summarize those. And I showed that screenshot at the very beginning when they chose to summarize the lowest, the low, low, lowest review size they could find. So the thing is here is to try and incentivize better reviews from happy customers all over the place, not just on your site, not just on the biggest site like Yelp, but uh, include in your uh, strategy sites like Trustpilot, uh, Better Business Bureau, all of those rank very well on Google. And keeping in mind or keeping um, track on what your reviews are there is important because not just because they rank, but because Google may also choose those sites to show in the AI overviews. Um, this is uh, one of the examples of lower ratings uh, review sites ranking for a brand name. And that was the reason for the very negative uh, SGE answer. Now it's AI overview uh, from Google that was ranking on top of everything else. One thing that I can suggest, and that's a very great service, is Shop Approved. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with that site. What they do is they syndicate on-site reviews. So people who are leaving uh, reviews on your site, those reviews will be syndicated through many other services, though, that the average sentiment is more balanced. You will not have a five-star review everywhere, but at least uh, from your site, because your site is much more likely to get positive reviews because people just go back to whatever site they bought from to find to leave a review instead of just going elsewhere. So your site is much more likely to generate better reviews. And this site would syndicate them to, to third-party sites like um, Trustpilot, Better Business Bureau. There are a lot of uh, other platforms that they um, support and that is all automated and they're using APIs. So it's all very easy to do. All you need is to get that service, especially for like e-commerce e uh, business that is that is very useful to try and balance all those review sites. So you don't have to, be, to get worried about which is ranking on top of everything else, which is getting summarized in AI overviews from Google. Uh, when you have all that balance, you have much more security about your online sentiment. Now, Reddit. <laughs> and uh, it's a newer thing than just brand reviews because uh, Google started ranking them on top of everything else about, again, five, six months ago. So it's relatively, you know, we still think in our SEO community of things, it's temporal. So Google will balance a little bit everything, uh, that situation when whatever you search, you just see Reddit threads. But at this point, this is what we are dealing with. There are Reddit threads for everything, including branded search. And it is not something that is easy to control because Reddit crowd is very defensive. So even if you have a negative experience on Twitter from a customer, you can just go there, comment on that tweet and invite them to go to your private um, community or uh, give them some information on how to get a hold of your customer service. And that's it. You, you kind of remove that negative uh, sentiment from uh, online search. Reddit is different. It's more evergreen because threads from five, six, 10 years ago can rank in Google. And it's also much, very much more defensive. So if you as a brand representative trying to get into those Reddit threads saying that, no, it's not true, we're all good, that's what happened, you will be attacked and uh, it may not go well. So it's very, it's not easy to get to, control that sentiment and Reddit is ranking very high. And as you know, Google also has an agreement with Reddit by so they can use their data, their threads, and there's a good chance that they also um, crawl everything that Google has about every band and it could end up in the IO of use as well. So Reddit is something we need to keep in mind, even though it's not easy to do. If you, um, also, another thing is that a lot of customers are now just use Reddit whenever it comes to the branded search because they do want to find those threads and see firsthand experience from other customers uh, about any brand. So it's if you have Reddit in uh, your branded search, or even if you don't, keep in mind keep in mind Reddit because it's some it's a threat. 
for reputation management for sure. One uh, example of dealing with that is creating a branded subreddit. This is one example from Comcast. It is not easy. It takes a lot of time and effort. It's not like you can create a subreddit and go and leave and it will be all happy. It, it, it takes time to make it popular to update it on a regular basis, to reply to people. It's like if a separate project that your customer support or your social media team should be taking on and it's a daily it's, it's a daily in time investment. But this is an example of how Comcast, if you search for Comcast Reddit, you will see their own subreddits on top of everything. And uh, if you search for, um, if you try to get any AI summaries for anything that uh, includes Comcast and Reddit, those threads from there are regional, they are branded as subreddits will come up as well. So it's a, it's a great way to control that, uh, to control what's uncontrollable, <laughs> to have your own little space on Reddit that ranks. And depending on how much time and energy you are dedicate you you are you are ready to spend on this this could be this could be a good um time spent especially if you already have some reputation management issues on reddit create your own subreddit it will rank google loves official channels if you rank if you link it from your website it will rank on top of everything else another thing is do just just be on reddit listen to what people are saying uh about you, about your competitors, about topics that, uh, about questions that your products uh, answer or solve. We have a special product that we promote content on Reddit, but it's already tailored to Reddit. So it's not just any anything that we do, but it also creates those uh, rankings and associations with the brand as well. So anyone who is searching for your brand on Reddit would be uh, discovering you from that content as well so just being on reddit uh being very careful with it i think it's the most important thing because it's such a touchy feely community that it could go wrong at any moment um but be there listen to people to what people are saying and um, engage with them in a very careful manner is a good idea for sure search for your name on a regular basis and for your brand name i think that's what I had should have started with, but search for your brand name and see what AI overviews come up with, how they're changing, if there are even AI overviews for that. But there is no yet other reliable way to find out if you have AI overviews coming up for your branded search, except for searching for your brand name of yourself. So the tools are still keeping up. SEO tools are still trying to catch up with that. It's a dynamic, it's personalized. So for now, try to search for your brand name as much as you can, as often as you can, and see if there is anything coming up for your brand name in terms of AI answers or overviews. There is a tool that can help you with that, but not with AI overviews. It it supports Chat GPT and Gemini, so you can search for something like top ten something top ten SEOs, for example, in the United States. And if you rank, and if your rankings are changing in terms of when Gemini or Chat GPT give those answers, you can see those graph uh, showing uh, if you if you even come up with there or how your rankings are changing. Again, it's not for AI overviews, but because we are entering that um, era of of that time when anyone can be discovered from uh, AI generative AI platforms, and Google is introducing it in search results, I think it's important to keep an eye on all of them and see how they're changing and how they're different and uh, why. AI overviews chose one answer over the other or one ranking URL over the other. So this is this is a good starting point, at least, to try and keep an eye on a few of those platforms and see if AI platforms even know about the you, if, how, what they think about your competitors, why they chose to rank you on top of them or uh, below them. So it's it's still a learning curve. So I think tools like that a great idea. I don't think I don't I don't know why they are not as widespread as they could have because it's a big problem to solve for businesses to see what those AI platforms are saying about your brand or about your competitors as well. So try that tool. It has a free trial and um 
I think it even has a free version. So keep an eye on uh, tools like that and see how other generative AI platforms are positioning your brand in comparison to your competitors. Finally, the last but not least is dominate your branded search. I know it is easier said than done. I've been there for myself, for my, for many of my clients. It is not easy. One thing that I've been always doing successfully is re content repurposing. So the more platforms you use to repackage your, uh, plat your content to the better, that all adds to the overall context, overall uh, brand recognizability, all of that is important. So if you just create a video, don't stop there. You can create articles, you can create uh, reels, you can create, um, um, I don't know, transcript and turn them into the uh, into articles. You can create audio uh, podcasts from those. So all of that, keep in mind, whenever you create one asset, be it an infographic, a video, one article, one research, anything, keep in mind how many how many uh, formats you can turn it into and then spread it out across many platforms because all of that is scrollable, indexable, and the more Google is reminded about your brand, the, the better. And many of those assets have great uh, potential to rank for those long tail branded search queries that you really want to dominate with your own assets. So uh, this is one of the tactics that I've been using for years. The more you do, the better in terms of your brand name mentions. Any way you create a video, add your brand name there, get on a podcast, get on webinars like this one, get anywhere you can, and then repurpose. I usually do reels of any interview that I, 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 I was in to try and get a lot of YouTube shots, uh, you, Instagram reels, anything you can do, anything that's like Twitter videos, native videos, all of that uh, contributes to that overall context about your brand that you want to control better in search results. Oh, and I think I'm done. I have no idea how much time I took. <laughs> but... I, think, I think we're all right. There were some great insights there on um, some classic, some classic brand management things, but also I think the, the, the thinking about the reviews, I was, I was uh, quite surprised at some of, some of the sort of long tail, deep, deep dive reviews that are showing up in the brand SERP. So I think that that's, you know, the people who are managing their reviews well and spending their time on that will be rewarded. Um, we'll get to some questions uh, later on. I'll, yep. I'll stop sharing right, right now so that someone else could share. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much for those insights. And, um, and Eli has some great tactics and he's going to jump right into those. Um, and I'm you're in for a treat as well. Should unmute. Okay. That was awesome. And thank you. I just want, I'm not going to share tactics. I'm going to share more uh, strategy, but I just want to add one more tactic to what Ann said. It was amazing. Um, I saw a comment about Reddit being mean. So Google's always worried about monopolies and awaiting too much towards one thing. So you can actually use Quora because Quora shows up in the same with the discussions and Quora is less mean and it's just as spammy. So you could throw in whatever you want. So with that, uh, I'll start talking about the apocalypse. So I, I shared that there was a, an SEO apocalypse happening about a year ago. And I would stick with that contention that this is an apocalypse. And the reason is, is because like I, whoever was on right away, I mentioned that I'm a couple of miles from Google's campus and my entire social circle is Googlers. So if I go to the park with my kids, I see people wearing Google t-shirts and I randomly ask them questions and they're always open to share. And it's amazing when you ask Googlers questions, there are certain things that they know are trade secrets and only the CIA can extract from them. And then there's other things that they're happy to share, like what team they're working on and what their projects are. So when I started meeting people who said that their project was SGE and every search engineer I met, they said their project was SGE. And I would go to conferences and the Google booth that were selling ads would talk about AI and what they're doing with AI and search. I started thinking, and again, this is when they, Google had just announced that they were going to do something like this it occurred to me that everything about search can change. And that's an apocalypse. And I, I think that too many people in the SEO world think of this as a step function, like, oh, this is an algo update, things slightly change. And I think not. And as I'll show you in a quote shortly, I think everything is changing. I think our entire approach towards SEO changes. 
it's interesting to me when people ask me questions about like no follow or do follow or what anchor text should I use? And I have to remind them that we live in a world where Google's rewriting content from scratch, that the Google algorithm is thinking that in, in multiple cities around America, Google has cars, Waymo cars that drive without any drivers. And they talk to people on the road. This is not do follow versus no follow. This is the engine thinks itself and decides based on a lot of things what's relevant. And, and you know, Anne mentioned the leak today, the API leak. Those are all algorithms, but we're not going to see the machine learning. We're not going to see the AI. And I think it's really about understanding this is the direction that Google wants to go. So I think we are in an apocalypse. I think this is a time where we need to think about everything about Google changing and not think about how we just change our tactics. So Google lo actually launched this at IO two weeks ago. So they introduced this. They said that the entire search results are changing. And uh, you know, for the last year, they've been announcing this and everyone's been ignoring them and the media hasn't really covered this. And now they're starting to cover it. And they're realizing that this is much bigger than I think. But it's actually not here. They've only launched it in the US. They've only launched it on logged in users. And that was a great tool that Ann shared. And I'm going to check that out. But the tools aren't working because you need to be logged in. And from all the websites I'm looking at, I'm not yet seeing drops in traffic. And I think that's because it's only on a certain amount of results. And again, an insight I've heard from talking to Googlers is that Google is actually going to launch this category by category. And the first categories are really going to launch this are on categories that are not sensitive. So there's all been many screenshots that are kind of sensitive around health related queries. They're going to launch it probably on sports or celebrity. So they're really going to go all in on that because it's not sensitive, doesn't impact their ad revenue. The last thing I would say on this before I uh, really dive into this is you have to remember who the, the most important audience is to Google, and that's the shareholder audience. They're doing things for Wall Street. They're doing things for their stock price that affects their own personal salaries. Not that they're selfish people, but that's the way they're going to make decisions. And it's important that their share price continues to go up. So maybe they'll do things around AI they don't necessarily believe in, but they do it because otherwise Wall Street thinks that they don't have it anymore. So they're going to do these things. They're going to make sure it satisfies users. They have most of the users in the world. So they don't have to go that far to satisfy users because users aren't going to go to anything else because there really isn't going to be anything else. So with that, this is the scary quote that I heard during Google Marketing Live that really made me realize that this is going to be so much worse than we thought. So anybody that's been in the SGE beta for the last year, it's essentially Google search with a summary at the top. But if you watch Google Marketing Live, which happened last week, there was this quote, and then there was a, a screenshot of what search could look like. And the example was Monterey. So it's a city in, in Northern California, it's a, a beach town. And they show this result where the entire layout has changed. There's now you search Monterey and you're seeing food reviews. You search Monterey, you're seeing directions. So these are sort of added features, but if you're trying to rank on the word Monterey, and you did rank on the word Monterey, everything about that has changed. Now, what if the same thing happens for e-commerce terms? What if you're looking for a new bike and right now you see 10 blue links or you see e-commerce shopping and now everything has changed. And now Google starts prompting you, tell me what kind of bike you want, you want. Is this for you or for someone else? That could all happen. And that's the direction Google's going to want to go because that's what users are going to benefit from. Now, there's been a lot of articles over the last week where the media is now making fun of Google. And I think it's important to put this in context. Again, Google's most important audience is shareholder value and the price of stock of their stock going up. They're not going to back off something they've been testing for an entire year just because there's some articles and make fun of them. Yes, the PR team is probably not sleeping. Yes, they're scrambling to do a lot of things, but they're not going to back off a fundamental change. And they're doing a lot of these things, even if they don't like them, but they're doing them because the competition is forcing them to do this. And keep in mind that what Google has launched only puts them in, at parity with ChatGPT and at parity with, with perplexity. They need to go, they need to move forward. They need to show that they're competitors. So they're going to keep doing these things. And the last thing I would say on this topic is that all these things are happening. These mistakes are happening because Google fundamentally changed everything about their entire business overnight. So imagine Google search launched in, you know, it launched before the, before 2000 and one day it suddenly had indexed the entire web. I guarantee you, we would have found some ridiculous things. So, but it took 25 years to get to the point where we are right now. And it's been iterative and it's gotten better. 
they didn't fundamentally change everything overnight. So all of these articles coming out and saying, these are the, the weird things that Google has. It's because everything changed overnight. They launched a product overnight and the media and all the users that are sharing these things on Twitter and Reddit are doing them a favor because they're helping them to debug in real time. And most of the time when I, sh I see these things, I can't replicate them because they're debugging in real time. So here's what, we're, what you need to do about this. So it's here to stay. AI is a part of search in the future. And I don't have any great tactics because it's changing in real time when you, and, and, and the best, right? We're doing, you want to really focus on your brand. Your brand will always exist. I think AI overviews is going to activate a lot of the Google assistants. There's, a, I think there's 3 billion Android devices in the world and hundreds of millions of Google devices, the Google homes and everything has a voice on it. AI is now going to make those things effective and focusing on your brand will get your brand to exist. So that's the one tactic. And I think Anne was great there. In otherwise, I think we need to focus on the strategic approach to this. So number one is really you want to communicate. So if it's your own business and you have investors, you want to communicate that the channel you had that was driving a lot of traffic and conversions to date may be changing. If you are an SEO consultant or any sort of marketing consultant, now is the best time to communicate that there is an apocalypse happening. Now, maybe this apocalypse doesn't happen. Maybe it's not as bad as I think it's going to be. Good. So now you're the person that warned of a potential apocalypse and you get to say the comet averted. It, it missed the earth. Or do you want to be that person that, that knew there was going to be apocalypse and you decided not to warn and then that happens. So whatever you're doing, you want to communicate that things are changing because they will change and they will likely change fast. Two years ago, before ChatGPT launched, none of us could have predicted this is where we're going to be. The beginning of this year, none of us, many people didn't predict that we were going to be seeing AI launching like this in the middle of the year. And I think by the end of this year, it will be significantly different. So whoever your stakeholders are, communicate to them that everything is changing. Next is you want to build what the user wants. So I wrote a book that came out four, uh, three years ago, Product-Led SEO, and it was my approach towards SEO that ignored a lot of the common wisdom around SEO and is based on my experience building SEO for large brands. And you want to understand your user and you want to build an entire experience around a user. So think of something like TripAdvisor. They're not focused on hotel keywords. They're focused on every single property in every single language in the entire world, the search volume for that and trying to convert that search volume because that's what they've done. They've built a product. They haven't focused on keywords. They're not building links for those specific keywords. So you want to build what the user wants. If you want to read my book, I'm keeping it 99 cents for as long as I can on Kindle. Uh, so check that out you, or you don't have to, you can find summaries online or you could just believe that the one second summary I've just given you, but build what the user wants. Next, you want to target the mid funnel. And this has been my process that I've come in, that I've started developing once I saw SG starting to launch. I wrote a, a sub stack on this, check out my sub stack on how you want to target the mid funnel. So what the mid funnel is, if you look at any sort of marketing funnel, the top of the funnel is awareness. So that's that I just want something. So I want Wix and um, I don't know yet that I want Wix. So I'm searching for something like make a website and make a website gives me all sorts of content. And somewhere in that content, it tells me that I don't need a website. So that's top of funnel. And that does not help Wix. When you start moving down mid funnel, that's like, oh, I need to make a website. I want to know the specific features. I want to compare Wix to WordPress. I want to know pricing. So mid funnel is now a little bit deeper into that entire buyer's process because you've now become aware of something. SGE, AI overviews, already makes you aware of this. It tells you what the concepts are. So now you can't focus on these concepts anymore because that's the traffic that will be stolen from you. In my opinion, that traffic didn't matter anyways because most of it didn't convert. There was a, a business I worked with that was on the supply side of an entire industry, but all of the traffic and all the content they created was on the buy side. They didn't convert a single thing. They were focused on traffic. Focus on what will convert for you as you create your entire SEO strategy. And I'll, I'll really sum that up by saying ignore search volume completely. Because if you look at something like website maker for Wix, uh, George and Crystal probably know the exact search volume, but I'm going to guess it's like, you know, 200,000 searches per year. It doesn't matter because the conversion rate will be on, will fractions of that. But if you focus on, your brand, if you focus on Wix pricing and somehow Wix is losing out to a site like G2 or a Captera, but they can make themselves rank better or get more clicks than that, 
they've put conversions directly back in their pocket. So focus on what converts for you. Don't focus on anything like search volume. So just completely ignore search volume as you complete, as you create your SEO strategy. And I think the best place is BidFunnel because they're already aware of you. Another website, maybe Reddit has making them make them aware of what they need to do to convert. And now you give them the strategy and the content that they want. So when you're measuring your SEO, you want to focus on the conversions that come from it, which is something everyone should have always done, but not rankings. So if you're focused on rankings, now you're going to see that an AI overview is on top of the number one result you've ever had, but no one clicks. So your traffic will plummet. So you'll still be reporting that you're ranking number one, but it doesn't matter. Or maybe you're reporting on impressions, but you're you're not getting the click because it's, they're going to the AI overview. They may be clicking a result in the AI overview, which I don't know if that matters. And I don't know that you Google even wants people to click into the results because Google just wants to inform them of the content. But you really want to focus on where you're going to get the click where an AI overview can't take something away. So say a health query, if someone wants to know how they cure a migraine, I don't think they're just going to trust an AI overview. They're going to go deeper into that. So build that content where you know you're going to get the click. And you probably need to find new tools because the tools today only measure those search impressions and those rankings. And, and keep looking for those new tools and find different ways to measure what you're getting. This is something that I heard over and over at IO. And I, I heard in uh, Sundar Pakai, the, the uh, CEO of Google, he had a, a podcast interview on The Verge. They're aware of all the things people are doing with AI. It works today. Users don't like it today, but it will stop working. So if you look at AI as a way to create a lot of content for free or for very cheap, and to go from having 100 pages to 100,000 pages, that may work for a very short amount of time, but that's not a strategic approach. So look at AI as a way to understand your users. You can do a survey with your users by you know, having an AI chatbot and learn more about them. That's a good way to use AI. You can use that to create multi-prompted content, but don't just take a single prompt and write thousands of pages. You really want to understand more about what your users are doing. So today, users might be using Google search to go find something that they want, and they're going to convert from that. But maybe they're going to start using their phones more if AI is better. Maybe they're going to start speaking to their phones more, and those are going to be longer, longer queries. Google mentioned that queries that are five words or longer grew 50% more than queries that are short. So everything is changing. Again, this is an apocalypse. Overnight, we've seen, we went from trying to do SEO for like one to two word phrases. Now you're going to need to do SEO for 10 word phrases. So really understand your users. And the best way to understand your users is to talk to users and learn more about them. And the last thing is, again, I think everything about SEO is changing. And I, I think the biggest threat to Google's dominance is not Bing, is not ChatGBT, but it's actually meta. So anybody that uses WhatsApp, you'll notice that when you search for a conversation, Meta is prompting you to do an AI query. Right now, if you do an AI query, that's going in, that's recommending that you do a Google search. Now, crawling the web and indexing the web is not nearly as difficult as it was when Google was created. There are many search engines. None of them have distribution. Meta has distribution. There are 2 billion daily active users of Meta. So the search engine of the future could be Meta could be perplexity. It could be Apple. It could be Amazon. It could be open AI, whatever it is, everything about search is changing. So as you understand your users and you talk to, and watch what your users are doing, don't focus on things like Google API leaks. This is a way to find a loophole in Google, focus on a way to understand your users and be on the platform your users are using and be flexible and build SEO around that. And again, thank you guys for listening and having me here. And here's how you can follow me, uh, check out my book. Like I said, it's 99 cents and I love my Wix website. If you don't yet have a Wix website, you're missing out. Thank you so much for that fantastic presentation, Eli. There was so many, so many gems um, and absolutely, you know, really forward thinking and, and, you know, classic thinking as well, thinking about your user, thinking about stuff, the stuff that makes sense and, um, and I think you're absolutely right that I, I don't think this is going anywhere. Um, so, so people that are trying to bury their head in the sand are going to struggle. Um, George, I'm sure you've got some great questions and, and I know we've only got a little bit more time with our fantastic experts. So if we can get, if we can get through these two questions, I've chosen them because, um, I've been to two SEO meetups in New York, um, and Brighton SEO and the way that SEOs are thinking about SGE 
and their clients is primarily through context, telling them, contextualizing everything about the peer. And so this is an interesting question and one that I struggle with as a publisher. How does SGE affect the results from keyword research tools? Everything appears differently on the CERT. Keyword research tools, how they're not really accounting for that. And so in your keyword research, I know you just said, ignore search volume, Eli, right? But not everyone's going to do that. Some clients are going to be like, oh no, right? Um, so what what is your advice here now that SGEs kind of move stuff around? Um, let's go with Anne, since it's been a while since we've heard from you. Anne, uh, if you have an answer. I'm I'm a very traditional SEO. I do believe that keyword research is still very important and not just because um, we want to match those keywords to our documents, but that's how we know what people are typing, what they are what they are searching for. We can go from there. We can go from uh, those keywords to find popular questions, to match them to whatever our customers are saying in different words. But keyword research for me has always been much more than optimizing a document. And yes, it has been changing in terms of back 20 years ago, we, you could just take those keywords and create pages to match it, all of them. These days, it's more about understanding your customers better and their struggles and what they what they need to know what they what their priorities are and uh, they're not as straightforward anymore but everything I do in SEO or usually starts with keyword research whether it's brainstorming whether it understanding uh, what my competitors focuses are uh, what they what they optimize for what their customers, um, how they are discovering their products. So I don't feel, I don't think that AI at this point is changing anything about that. Yes, there are, there's, there are going to be even more queries in Google that were never recorded or repeated, like brand new queries, because people will start speaking to ChatGPT, Google, all of those even more now. And it's more like conversational search, but knowing what they type until they stop typing in search in the search box, I'll, uh, until that moment, mm -hmm. I'm going to rely on uh, keyword research a lot in yeah. terms of my strategy. Yes, and uh, you got another question for Eli before he has to, to scoot along. Okay. This one should be, I want to hear if you have anything to say about that, uh, Eli, if you want to add that on, but this is going to be a pretty short question. Is there a different way or is there any way we can attempt to track interactions from SGE? Yeah, so I'll just answer that last question. I, I, yeah, and summed up the way I do keyword research. I just don't use the output from SEMrush or Ahrefs that just says these are the keyword volumes. I'm using Google Suggest. I, I actually really like user interviews to learn what people are doing. And it's when you use Google suggest, you find things that there's no keyword volume for, and you can see things around the corner. Like I spent years at SurveyMonkey and they ignored Typeform because they're like, it's too small, but there were so many queries, SurveyMonkey versus Typeform, this thing. And it, it comes in like, oh, I, I, I'm surprised by this. But if you really don't focus on search volume, you focus on users and user research, you'll see these things from search. So as far as measuring AI interactions, I, I asked Google a year ago, I don't, they haven't committed to doing anything and I think we'll have no idea. So unfortunately you got to go back to basics and do manual searches. That's, that's exactly what I was suggesting when with branded search at this point, you just search for your brand, like Google yourself, like we did 20 years ago. And, uh, there is a hope. Google does have separate tools for Discover, for Google News and all of that. Uh, they may introduce something around the uh, along the course, but not so far. So just search and see for search. Prioritize your queries first. Those, like Eli said, drive conversions. Those are middle funnel. Those are not as a discovery, uh, brand discovery is branded search is your priority as well. So prioritize those and search for them. For now, that's that's the only the only way. We will see. And and remember who the primary audience of Google is. It's shareholder value and building those tools requires a lot of money and time resources. And they're only going to do that if the metric they use is it makes the internet a better place. But if it also provides shareholder value. So keep that in mind. So I, I don't think we can answer that question that like having the data on AI overviews makes the internet a better place. 
nor does it add shareholder value. So don't hold your breath. Well, that's really, really in interesting. I think if, if people are new to to you, Eli, and to you, Anne, they can find you online. Um, Eli is a fantastic Substack. Anne is all over the web. She talked about her con um, her content distribution. She writes for um, Search Engine Land. She writes for lots of other other publications. Both Eli and Anne have fantastic LinkedIn's. If you would like to follow them, please do. Um, I have some resources that are from the Wix SEO Hub. We will post them on uh, on the website later, where you can also find a recording of this of this um, webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you, Anne. Um, thank you, Eli. And um, thank you, George, for moderating today. Um, and have a wonderful day.